Hi and welcome to another training video and this one is going to be on map info and we're going to look at some quite complicated ideas here um, particularly to do with labeling of areas. Now what we have here is just a, a Bing roadmap as an underlay. I also have open um, some small companies and you'll see that they have positional data and if I look at the browser here this is the kind of data that's in that file. So it contains a, a unique ID number, uh, the name of the company, some address information, particularly of importance to us are the number of employees. And there are also a couple of columns on the far right hand side. One is total, and that is the total number of companies. And the other is all employees, which is the sum of all the employees. Now these two columns have been added on um, by using this table and modifying the structure um, but they could equally be added on in Excel or whatever you're using to get this data into map info in the first place and clearly these are not going to update unless you have them in Excel as a formula which is what I would recommend so have it in total as in account of all of the columns or sorry all of the rows and here all employees as the sum of this employees column Okay, so going back to this map itself, I also have open what's called the output areas. Now this is um, census output areas, and if I zoom in, this is effectively the smallest level of region that we can get, uh, certainly that we can get for free. And each of these regions, I think, contains around about 3,000 people would live within each of these very small output area regions and um, clearly it, it won't be an exact figure it's purely to do with the census information and what we're going to do is we're going to use these output areas to get some information about the particular companies within those output areas themselves so to start with I'm just going to hide the companies we have the output areas at the moment and if I double click on here I can choose to label it with something from the output area field. Now, let me just go back to the uh, table view and let's have a look at these output areas anyway. And you'll see that we have an object ID, which we're not going to use, and then we have the output area, and it's OA11, CD is the code. So the output area 11 code, 11 stands for 2011. So those are relevant codes that we could actually use as a label. So the OA11CD might be one that we might want to use. So when I go back into here, OA11CD, I click OK and then turn on the labels and those are now the relevant output area codes. But actually that's not what we want. What we want is we want something to do with the number of companies within each of those output areas. But we don't have that within this file. There is no option here for the number of companies. But what we can do is we can join together with another file. So I can say I want another column in this file here, the Surrey output. So I want to add in an extra column which has data from the other file, which is the small companies file. Uh, this one here. And the way I do that is I go to the table structure and I modify the structure. And it's this Surrey output one, which is this one here, that I want to modify the structure of. So I say OK, I'm going to add a field and let's just have this as an integer field because it's going to be whole numbers and we shall call it uh, companies and in fact I'm going to call it S companies because it's only small companies um, it closes down because I've um, I made some changes to the structure but it hasn't actually closed the file it just closed the view of it so I can straight away go up there and say let's just open that one again and it will open it again directly but I do need to just change this so that it's not blanking out uh, the maps underneath and if I now go back here 
and say let's look at this as a browser again um, we should see that we've got this s companies column in there now but it's got no data in it yet because we haven't told it what data has got to go in there now we could manually type that data in but we want to update this column automatically and we want it to update and we want to do sorry output that's the file we're working on and the column to update is s companies and we want to get the value from but we don't want to get it from this table we want to get it from small companies and let's have a look at the join where the object from small companies is within the object from the table sorry output that's exactly what we want and what we want to do is we want to get a count of all the companies I'm not going to browse the results because I've already got a browser open here so I'll click OK and you should notice this column updating and if I scroll down eventually we shall see some uh, it is a very very big file so let me just do this another way um, if I right click there and I sort descending it should give me the big numbers at the top so you'll see that it has actually now put in some totals here for where there are companies within those output areas so now if I go back here to look at this and we know that there are some in this area here if I say let's choose a label and now we want to label with S companies and that wasn't there before so we now have S companies in there and I can click OK and when I turn the labels on you're now seeing numbers coming up in here telling me how many small companies there are within each of those areas and there's one of the 25 companies in that area uh, that makes a lot of sense because this is the high street and there's a business center there so there are a lot of companies next door that's residential so there are no companies in there it makes absolute sense okay what else can we do with these labels well we could choose to see rather than seeing how many companies there are we could see how many small companies there are as a percentage so if I go to expression I can say s companies divided by and from my other file there were 178 small companies and I'm just going to say times 100 to give me the percentage I verify my syntax yes that's okay click OK and okay there we have our percentages but these are actually showing me too many decimal places so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in there and I'm going to change the formatting of this and I'm going to use a function and I'll scroll down to the format function and you'll see that I open and close the brackets for me what I want is I want to tell it that the format that I'm going to use is a zero and then the decimal place and then one um, one decimal place unit after that uh, close the quotes and now I need to close the bracket there verify syntax is correct click OK and let's have a look so now you see it showing me the number and one decimal place of uh, precision but I also want to see the percentage sign at the end of that after a space so I need to add in some extra text at the end now the way we add in text is we just use the plus sign and then put in whatever text we want in quotes so I want a space and then the percentage and that's all I want so I verify that it says it's okay click OK and now you'll see it's coming up with the percentage to one decimal place and then a space and then the percentage sign afterwards and that's exactly what I want okay so I hope you found that useful this is just showing you really how we can show some uh, some data from one file as the label in another file um, and the files here are called tables okay as I said I hope you found that useful any questions do get in touch and again thank you for listening